Hey guys, my name is Jeff Rojas and I'm an author, photographer, and educator based out of New York City. For those of you who've followed this channel, you know that I produce many simple lighting setups for you guys to recreate. Because I plan to continue doing that, I wanna make it even easier for you. How? By simply providing you with a complete lighting recipe. Moving forward, I'll be including individual light measurements of each light on set, like exposure reading, distance, and height. In order for you to understand that, however, you're going to need to learn how to use a light meter. Now, while most cameras these days have a built-in light meter to measure the overall exposure of a specific scene, a traditional handheld light meter serves a huge advantage for those of you interested in learning more about light. Simply put, a handheld light meter is used to evaluate the intensity of your light and then calculate for exposure. So for instance, you can input your shutter speed and aperture settings and it'll take those into account and see if your estimate is under, over, or correctly exposed. Doing so allows you to be sure that you're not losing anything in the shadows or highlights of your image. It's a convenient tool to have, and today I'm gonna to show you guys exactly how to use one in a studio environment. Because we're focusing on studio photography, I'm gonna switch my camera settings so that we're calculating for the exposure of our strobe light and eliminating any ambient light in the room. In that case, I'm setting my shutter speed to 1 200th of a second and my ISO to 100 so that I'm sure to freeze everything in frame and eliminate any blur of our subject or the clothing in the image. By setting those two variables as a constant, the light meter is gonna be focusing on giving me the right aperture or f-stop for the scene. To use the light meter, simply hold the light meter out in front of your camera, just under your subject's chin so that you're measuring the light falling onto your subject. Next, press the meter button, then activate or trigger your flash. And voila, the light meter will give you the correct aperture setting for the set. All you have left to do is set your camera so that the aperture setting is correct and that you have a correctly exposed image. Again, what that means is that you have the ability to retain all the detail in the shadow side and highlights of your image. And that's great and all, but let's assume that you want something a little darker, something with a bit more contrast, something a bit moodier. To do that, switch the position and direction of your light meter so that it only accounts for the main light. Doing so will disregard calculations for the shadow side of your image and just basically focus on the brightest side of your specific subject's face. So let's take a meter reading for that side and change the settings to reflect the new aperture calculation. Now here's a before and after shot of the same scene with the two different aperture readings. As you can see, while we haven't changed the position, power, or direction of our light, we have a much moodier image because we're solely accounting for the lighter side of our subject's face. Finally, and quite frankly, the most essential part of using a handheld light meter is the ability to measure each light that you have on set. For instance, if you have a hair light or rim light and you wanna calculate for those to make sure they're not overexposed or pure white, you can reposition the light meter to only account for those specific lights. Alternatively, I can also position the light meter on my background as a way to understand how much light is falling onto it compared to that of my subject. As you can see, learning how to effectively use a light meter can help you learn how to be a much more knowledgeable studio photographer. With that being said, moving forward, I'll be including the lighting recipes of my shoots in the descriptions of each video. Not only are you going to see the camera settings, but I'll also give you the distance and light meter reading for each light on set so that you're able to replicate everything that I do here. So for those of you that are interested, be sure to keep watching for those. If there's something that you feel that you've missed or you have a specific question about something in this video, please leave those in the comments section below. Also be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more tips like these. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you have an amazing day.